everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. This week I get to show you guys something that has been in the works for well over a month now, and that's just our build and instruction making process here in the studio, not including any of the original design time. This is the fourth massive minifigure scale accurate Star Wars build that we've put together in the studio. And this spectacularly designed model was originally designed by Peter Brookdale, AKA Cave God. That's the same guy that built the giant at, -AT as well as the sand crawler with Marshall Banana. Like always, I'm gonna be zooming in and showing you guys all the closer details of this model, but to give you a quick rundown, this model has a ramp that opens in the front. You can remove the roof of the cockpit with an interior on the inside, and the wings open and close. They are motorized and can be operated with a remote control. On top of that, we also went ahead and did something a little bit extra. This is something we do with some of our larger models, and that is we lit it up with LED lights. Included in the instruction manual is the process of lighting this model, and you can get all the exact parts you're gonna need from one order at Brickstuff. Those are the guys that we use exclusively to light all of our things, including all of Yavin. And right now, for you guys, the viewers, up until June 30th, Brickstuff is offering a 10% discount code on all orders. It's BV10, so if you like lighting your kits, this is a probably a pretty Pretty good time to get stuff from them because they don't offer discount codes very often. And if you were to check out our web store to get the Zeta shuttle, they are also linked in the description as well. Check out the description of this video too. Speaking of which, a purchase of the instructions would include a PDF step-by-step -step guide, a visual parts list also in PDF format, as well as the digital one that you can just upload online immediately if you wanted to order the parts direct, and a readme file plus an email to uh, contact me in case you get stuck along the way. Way. The web store is a great way to help support us here at the channel. We absolutely love pushing ourselves to make amazing giant Lego creations like this. And it's all thanks to you guys and also the designers that we work with that are so talented like Pete here. So now jumping back into the Zeta class cargo shuttle, you might guess that it pretty much dwarves all of our other minifig scale Star Wars ships. You can see them flashing by the screen right now. This is how the Zeta class would be next to the rest of all of these vehicles. And it only really seems to meet its match when you put it next to the Slave One or the Imperial shuttle. Officially, its measurements are 31 and a half inches long or 80 centimeters, 23 and 3 eighths inches high, 59 centimeters, and 16 and a quarter inches wide, which is 41 centimeters. In case you're keeping track with the wings folded up like this, that's actually taller than the AT-AT -AT stands. Currently, ours is not completely rebuilt from the last time we moved it, but this just gives you an idea of how massive the shuttle actually is. From one particular scene, uh, the shuttle does prove that it is not totally useless in a battle. There are several blasters on the front of it, and according to the lore, they are added to the shuttle just to kind of ward off general pirate attacks, and it's not supposed to be able to hold its own in a real space battle. The blasters on either side of the cockpit can move around, though the ones on the wings are totally stable. And then moving down into the cockpit, you can see that the plates come apart in two pieces, and there's a pretty detailed, uh, pretty well fleshed out interior on the inside. We have two primary seats for pilot and co-pilot with one navigator or technician in the uh, back. And then if I light this up a little bit better, you can see the ladder that leads down into the main cargo hold. Outside of that, there pretty much aren't any other big interactive features. And the real one, the one that we really like to focus on and that's the most fun to use is the motorized wing folding function. The way it is currently set up on our remote, you can control the speed in which the wings go up and down. And actually, as I record this, I can move my mouse across the screen really fast. This is actually how the shuttle flies in real life. It doesn't have any anti-gravity things in the wings like most of the Star Wars ships are said to have in the lore. It really just flaps really hard. All right, that, that's too much fun. I could do this all day, but here is a clip of the wings folding up in about as fast a motion as I felt comfortable doing. You can actually hear the audio of the motors working. It's not too loud. 
And remember, there's no automatic stop on a general LEGO remote control, so you do have to make sure to stop it before it gets too high. Nothing too majorly bad happens if you do crunch it a little bit. The only bad thing really that happens is when you go back down, you might realize that one of the bits of shoulder armor along the top of the wings might have come loose when you kind of smashed it up at the top. It's a pretty easy fix, but it's definitely something you should be aware of. In general, you don't want to start grinding your gears. Now I'm playing with the model, lighting it up a bit like you saw in the beginning. Remember, uh, all the stuff we use is from brickstuff.com. They have really, really nice electronics. Once again, that discount code for you guys, the viewers, is BV10. Definitely worth checking out. And you may have guessed, but the back of the ship is by far the coolest part of the light up process. Now I changed the settings on my camera a little bit. I tried to get it as accurate as to how this kind of looked to the naked eye. It might be slightly bright, but it's definitely better than the shots previous to it. And the engines light up pretty darn well. You may have seen from previous videos that we've been messing around with lighting up the ghost. That has been a ton of fun. And now that we've kind of gotten our hands dirty a little bit and we feel a bit more comfortable with the uh, general electronics, building a model with space to easily move wires around is now a priority, at least for the larger builds that we're uh, currently working with. As you can see, there's a few lights in the front. There's that one kind of searchlight or spotlight that's uh, right above the ramp door. And there are several trans black open pieces that show the windscreen of the cockpit where some of the light bleeds through, but really you can't get too good of a look unless you take the top off. And there's actually uh, a decent amount of light to illuminate primarily the spot next to the technician or the engineer guy in the back. The last light you can't see unless you have the front hatch down there. Maybe at some point we might want to add some little LED strips for those three bright lines that you see on the front. But right now we're just happy that you can see something on the inside of this giant cargo shuttle in the actual cargo area. Currently the model doesn't have a huge fully fleshed out interior of the cargo spot. That's where the motors go, that's where the battery packs go, the IR sensor, as well as the smaller thinner wires that uh, you connect up for the LEDs. So at the end of the day I'd say this model has a pretty happy marriage between showing some interiors like the cockpit and the opening of the cargo hatch while sacrificing the larger cargo area in order to have lighting and motor functions. Anyways I think that's a pretty good balance. I'd like to know what you guys think about uh, how we set this model up or how Pete really, Cave God, set this model up in terms of form and functionality. And I'm glad to say Pete really did pay attention to the tiny details all along the surface of the shuttle. As I move across the surface of the shuttle, you'll notice that there are a ton of plate pieces that make up fun, interesting angles. And the model is made up of primarily dark bluish gray, but you can see a lot of old dark gray speckled in there intentionally. That's actually part of the part list. Looks like I found one little bit of the detailing that was off just by a tidbit, but there it is for a general overlook for the top of the shuttle. There are some other shots, maybe a few little close-ups of what that kind of shoulder armor looks. It's basically the protective bits of armor that go around the gears that control the wings. Even there, you can see lots of intentional details added from the builder, and it's not just a smooth gray surface. Now, from the top of the ship, let's move on over to the belly of the beast, so to speak. This is where the cargoing part of the cargo shuttle comes into play. The orange belly of the ship is a modular chunk, very much like how shipping containers nowadays can be taken off in those rectangular crates. This whole bit of the orange part of the shuttle, I believe, can just be detached and used to, you know, drop off very quickly and then pick up other crates to move from place to place. According to the lore, there didn't actually require any people to oversee this process so the ships could kind of just land and pick up very very quickly and you can also see larger versions of this shuttle in Rogue One kind of speckled throughout the top of Scarif. My guess is that they use the exact same uh, shuttle piece. They just kind of elongated the bodies. Maybe they're a little wider or they can be widened. Who knows? But ultimately you can see that even the cargo piece here has a bit of wear and tear by having been attached and detached, reattached many, many times over. There's some great detailing. I especially like how those slope pieces sort of make the ribs of the cargo piece kind of pop a little bit better. And also the scraped off paint and discoloration makes it feel just a little bit more alive. Now that we 
we've done the top and we've done the belly. Let's check out the wings, take a closer look. Here you can also see that there was actually quite a bit of the old dark gray added. Once again, that's all intentional. In fact, if you look close enough, you can see that the dark gray is symmetrical on either side. And we did our best to only include uh, old gray in ways that wasn't gonna be too expensive on the parts list. Because these pieces, once again, they're not actually produced anymore by Lego. The construction of these wings is very similar to how you might have seen the construction for the Imperial Shuttle UCS set, which makes sense. Uh, even the build design for this ship is actually very similar to that Imperial Shuttle. So what you have is a combination of Technic link arms studded into larger slope bricks that make up that angle on the edge of the curved part of the wing. There's a little bit of color variation with some white painted along the tops and little white strips that go down the flat edge of the wing. And though there is no stand for this model, in its landed position, you can get the wings down to the low enough angle for it to be in its flying mode. These wings don't usually fold down quite as low as what you might have seen in an Imperial shuttle, or at least that really kind of depends on the shot of the ship that you see from the film. Most of the time it doesn't, but in this one particular shot of it taking off, it does actually actually get a little bit lower. A little bit curious actually, maybe Yavin 4 has a different type of gravitational pull than other planets. I don't know, Star Wars doesn't really get that specific, but anyways, let's check out the back detailing a little bit more. I know I showed it off for talking about the lights, but it really is just worth taking a closer look at because the details are just so nice. And I think there's just a lot to appreciate about this model from all of its different angles. Currently, it is sitting in our much, much larger Yavin 4 mock right now. And you can see it technically has a place to land, though we only really built up the tarmac just enough in order for its feet to be able to touch the ground. Next week, after we have placed all of the internal lights that are gonna be sprinkled throughout the rest of the tarmac, we'll have an all hands on deck tile placing build a day where the shuttle will feel a lot more complete in a surrounded environment with pilots, technicians, and other ships sprinkled around it. So anyways, we're making Yavin update videos in case you wanted to stay on track with uh, that progress because that's sort of our bread and butter kind of thing we're really, really focused on here in the studio. And once again, you can find the instructions for this amazing model at our web store. That's www.brickvault.toys. All right, that's it for this episode everybody. Thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoy our content, you can always like or subscribe, and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault.